you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything I like. Hi, I'm anarchist prisoner Sean Swain. And I am one of his cellies from many, many moons ago. Yeah, anarchology. So um, before we get into today's topic, um, I have a question. Um, have, you, have, have you ever seriously considered um, joining the Somali pirates? Somali pirates? No, Somali. The Somali pirates off of the coast of Somalia. Right. Have you? Okay, good. Good. Right. I didn't want to offend yeah, anybody. Born. Right, I'm familiar. Yeah, I didn't want to offend anybody because I've done some research here, okay? So I was thinking about, you know, what am I going to do when I get home? And the, the obvious answer is, you know, just go to Vegas and do Frank Somali Sinatra pirates. tunes. Well, no, no, Frank okay. Sinatra in Vegas. That's the obvious answer, yeah, yeah. right? But it's also, way. it also feels a little bit shallow, way, right? Obviously. Yeah, but it, it feels like a shallow life to me. So I started looking into the Somali pirates, but um, okay. Okay. I, I just have to tell you, um, they don't, uh, they don't wear tri-corner hats. They don't have eye patches. They don't put the hooks on the hand or the peg legs. They don't say things like R maybe. And, uh, and they, um, they really treated Tom Hanks really shabby. Have you seen the, this really video shabby of Tom in that Hanks? Movie. Okay, so we are talking about the same thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about the same yes. Thing. And I have to say, I mean, I don't know. You might not agree with me. Uh, Tom Hanks is a national treasure. So... Uh, going all the way back to Bosom Buddies. Next to Nicholas Are you familiar with Bosom Buddies? Bosom Buddies? Mm -hmm. Are you familiar? Tom Hanks, Bosom Buddies? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. And everybody else who doesn't know what this is, they'll have to Google it. But um, so, yeah, I'm not joining the Somali Pirates. I, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, they, they lost. Yeah, so that's it. They lost. Yeah. So um, should we get to today's topic? What do you think? Absolutely. Um, so the, the profound topic. The introduction that I chose was because, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. So the reason I chose the introduction that I chose and was somewhat, you know, fundingly vague about it is because we're talking about identity. We're talking about mm -hmm. the different mm -hmm. aspects and attributes to make up an identity and also, you know, what we as people use as identifiers, which is to say um, adjectives that describe our identity. So right, right. One of the identities that I have is as your celly, right? We spent wow. two hours a day That's locked in a concrete box for an extended amount of time. That's a very select yeah. group of people. Right, right. And, and I'm sure everybody out there, is uh, is sending you their sympathies right now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but you got cosmic on me. You got cosmic on me before we even got started. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. Um, so so yeah, that's what that is. What we're dealing of, with. Uh, mm -hmm. The envelope. Who was the um, Tucker? Uh, <laughs> no. The oh, you mean, uh, the, oh, uh, uh, well, Trevor Clark. there was, uh, there was Trevor Clark. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Trevor Clark. Yeah. My favorite guy, my favorite guy, mm -hmm. an absolute sociopath, Trevor Matthew I'm Clark. I'm sure that he identifies at, you as his favorite guy too. Sure that yeah. You guys he now works at Wexner Medical Center. Guy. Yeah. Wexner well, Medical really? Center. He now works there fucking up those people's lives. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so so if we get to today's topic, identity. today's topic yeah. is identity. So um, we're going to express this in the question: Do you know who you are? And the question isn't who are you, but do you know who you are? Hmm. I, I think there's. I think <laughs> George Harrison identify. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think George Harrison should be should be plucking a sitar when we ask the question, you know, plinking plinking a, a, a sitar. But yeah, um, um, yeah. Uh, do you know who you are? Um, which which kind of seems like a stupid question if you didn't know what we had planned for the episode. But um, you know, kind of a no brainer. But that kind but that but that really is the point, I guess that we spend a lot of time navigating the world as we are and very little time questioning what makes each of us who we are. Um, so I think we should explore that question. Do we know who we are? So, so do me a favor here and imagine that you and I are just meeting for the first time, right? You with me? With that day very clearly. Um, and you're going to tell me who you are. What's the first thing you're going to tell me? My name. Exactly. It's, it's see, the principal way we identify name, ourselves. I'm telling you so much about me because more than likely my reputation will precede me once you hear my name. you hear my name, it will invoke so much, it, at least in – from what I understand it to mean. Right? When I tell right. you my the name, associations I'm not with the name. name, I'm also giving you my entire reputation, which is probably something that you yourself have encountered. No interaction of mine, but you've heard somebody else uh -huh. or, or heard of something. You know what I mean? Just I mean, right. the last time that you saw me, I was moving, but my feet weren't touching the ground. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you had some people pretty mad at you. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so so let's unpack this idea of our names, right? First off, right. first off, our names aren't really our names because we didn't pick our names. Somebody else put that name on us, right? Like my parents, my parents named me. I didn't choose Sean. I wasn't like five or 10 years old and they got to know me and decided, you know what? Yeah. This guy seems like a Sean. That's the I name we should put on him. Names like Dragonheart. Yeah. Or, or Megatron or something, you know, you just never know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you just never know. Oh, you just never know. But that's why though. And that's why, because yeah. what kind of world would we live in if people could call themselves crass mouthwash? Yeah. Uh, so, so this is Megatron yeah, right. for the for the Anarchology uh, 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 episodes right. and uh, the, the Anarchology podcast, and uh, we're, we're going to head into break. Second break, we'll call back. And and and, and we'll call and, and, right, and we're going to call right back, and we're going to pick up where we left off with Ello and Megatron. <laughs> thank you for listening. It, to X three. Yeah. If any, if anyone's Red. still listening to this, thank you. Okay, so yeah, I think I'm gonna yeah, hang up. Below for free merch. I'm in free merch. Yeah, free merch. But it shouldn't be free. It should be paid for. Ask that subscribe button. Ask the subscribe button and tell your friends all about us. And we're back, and we're talking about identity. So, uh, one of the principal ways that we uh, that we identify is by our names. Um, and I was just talking about how. Our names are something that are assigned to us by two perfect strangers before we're even born. Um, so in a lot of ways, the names that we're given are uh, uh, a package of aspirations that our parents have for us. It's not really something we're choosing for ourselves. So our names really don't say too much about who we are, the name itself. The name that gets assigned to us is um, is something arbitrary that we didn't choose. But the funny thing is, they've done studies. Um, maybe Bumblebee can can find some of this stuff. I'm not sure, but um, uh, uh, they've done studies where uh, they have people hooked up to brain scans and to polygraph tests, and they'll say a person's name, and 
when someone says your name, the, the name that you were born with, your 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 brain lights up like a Christmas Ooh, tree. Right. That's just stimulus. Yeah, right. Stimuli. Yeah. Which is which is which is probably not surprising. But you know, let me ask you because this. Because okay, we so, responded so, to it. Mm-hmm. So your mom gave you the name your mom and dad, whatever, co conspirators at three fifty agreed to the to the name of giving you Sean. But then at yep. what point do you take on the responsibility for the actions of Sean? At what point can you claim that? identity or claim that reputation because i mean i lived up to my name i made a name uh-huh. for myself when i came to the joint and i lived up to that right right Strong business well yeah was right that's an association though that's an association others are making between that name and your conduct because that's because they also right. accept that that name has been assigned to you right but it is a name that's assigned to you it's a name that is assigned, you see? And that's the point that I'm making here right. is that it's not the name that you've chosen. It's a name that somebody else chose for you. So when I say my uh-huh. name, it's not really my name. It's my mom it's and dad's name. name for me, right? I, it just so yeah, happens to be assigned to me. Yeah. So, um, so that's one way. And I would say that's an inadequate way for us to really be able to describe the substance of who we are and our identities based right. upon and that's I guess that what I was trying to say to when us. I was talking about your name and your reputation being like one presentation because when I say my name and then it has the recognition you might know me from Colleen you might know me from Ashlyn you might know me from the whole you might know me from a program. You might know me from – so there's all these multifaceted aspects of what that name represents. And mm-hmm. all I am is claiming everything that that name represents because that is my name. Right. So it's, yes. it's and- not in a – not in a, you know, a braggadocious way, but in a – a claim way in a, yeah. a because yeah. if it fails then it's on me too right the associations that are made with with the name either good or bad so let's go to that one now because that's another way that we are identified is in our relationships to other people and other yeah. things right yeah. um yeah. commitment so Loyalty. so we can say um my identity can be understood by the fact that I'm Nancy and Paul's son, or I'm Barb's cousin, or right. I'm Ello's right, former right, right. self-partner, you know. Um, and, and these are ways that, that we also attain identity and understand ourselves. But this is really also an inadequate right. way of understanding ourselves, because you are a different person to your grandmother than you are to me, and you're a different person to me than you are um, when you're attending Talim, and you're a different person there. You know, the, the, the these goal other not people, to be, these other associations. Isn't the goal mm-hmm. not to be different, though, to be the same at all of those? I don't know, because, right. because it isn't I would, up to you. I would you. be the same at Talim as I would with my great, because that's my best behavior. So the well, standard maybe so. of behavior is like my best behavior. And so I think that I would be the same at Talim as I would in front of my mother. And I think I would well, be yes. the same at Talim as I would at a funeral. Or I would be the same at Talim as I would at dinner with the family. Because that is the, like, that's Dean. That's my Dean. That is the standard of what mm-hmm. is completely yes. representable. But what you're talking about is your behavior in those places right? You have control over that. What you don't well, have I'm control over... About the I, okay. Right. Yeah. What you don't have I'll control over it. is other people's perceptions of who you are. Because who you are to your mom is right. someone entirely different than who you are to me. And so we may try to say that, that we can create a composite. I think, the, I hmm? think the, 
still want to push back on that because I, I really think that it would be the same. I cannot see myself, other than maybe, like, pushing it on the fucking Arabic, like, writing it, speaking it. That'd probably be the only part that I would tone down, I would say, if I was going to say there was a, but I still don't think there's any difference between how I would act with Tyler and how I would act with No, no, no. Yeah, I'm with you on that. that is. But we, what you're talking to, what you're talking about here is how you are and not who you are. Right. How you're interpreted. You right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. How you are is the same. With your mom, but who you are is right. entirely your different. See you as the your same. boss. Right. Your boss sees you and as mom wants a worker. To talent for the Amir spot up here. He wants me to be the Amir up here. Mm-hmm. Right. And the person who's there who is And the I don't Amir, think my mom would look at me like that. Right. My mom wouldn't look at me like that. My mom would not take away from that experience that I, I should qualify to be the Amir. She wouldn't even know what an Amir is. Right. See? So everybody so see sees you. Too. Right. So then that goes to when somebody speaks about you. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that goes together. Mm-hmm. All that goes together. Right. And we still don't find identity there. Right. We don't find the substance right. of who you are. Even if That's we create reputation. a composite from you all know, of these people's views right. of you, mm-hmm. because right. relationships end and you don't, you continue yeah, right. to exist exactly. even after a relationship ends. There is a, I say, I say, I joke with Portia and I tell her that she made me uh, world through rose tinted glasses or rose tinted lenses. Oh, like uh, she made you what? Change. See the world through rose tinted lenses. Mm-hmm. And through her influence, the world has taken on a rosy hue. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And do the right so, thing. And yeah. Malarkey. So, in all these ways, it's, in all these ways. of her influence in her life. Yes. So, so that's I, that. I, that's I, the uh, that's I, the relationship I, I to another. Hmm? Can you think of another way that we identify? Uh, yeah, gender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So gender. Our gender and identification. Goes, uh, and then it goes like, like, uh, like sexuality, meaning like heterosexuality, lesbian. Mm-hmm. And then it's political. But again, those are also relational. And then I would say those are also relational. And um, the what? The our gender identities or kind of. Or... I mean, that's um, like binary. How about you, are, um, I mean, you can change, but even once you change, you're mm-hmm. still one or the other. How about how about this? Uh, you're at a dinner party, right? And somebody walks up and shakes your hand. The first thing they tell you is their name. What's typically the second thing they tell you about themselves? It's the setting, I would say, probably because for like a fraternity and I were the president. Or I would be in How about like an occupation? About to take the stage. Yeah, right. What if people do. I mean, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. My name's John and uh yeah, I work for the welding yeah. company. And yeah. Hey, I'm Joe Snowbucket. I work in advertising. But if you're at a so, if you're at a church service, are you going to say electrician, or are you going to say like deacon or lay leader or elder or? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think well, that all still fits too. First brother, second brother, third. What I mean? Yeah. This is uh yeah, but but essentially it's the same. The required. It's a military it's the same event. formula. They're going to say their rank. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But they're going to say, essentially, Rondo. I'm going to give you my rank and my name. Yeah. This is, uh, this is who I am, and this is what I do. Right? And, and I think, probably, it's not coincidental that, yeah, or I'm that we do right. introductions. Or I'm so yeah. What's your name? And, and right. Yeah. Really this is me, and this is what I do. Right. So. 
with, with what we do, I think it's no coincidence that that becomes the second thing we reveal to people because the first thing that we're indoctrinated to accept is our names. That's how we know who we are. So and the second mean? thing we're indoctrinated to accept is that we have our purpose and meaning in what we do to keep this civilization program going. This is my function. This is what I do. You know, so we are indoctrinated to understand our importance that way. Um, yeah, we got a one minute break, so tell them what to do, Sean. What do they need to do? They need to buy our uh, They need to uh, use the bathroom and get a snack. Get a snack. And then and then come on back. Follow us on Facebook. And that too. Her color, her hair looks nice. And buy a lot of merch. Buy a lot of merch. A lot of merch. And, uh, a lot of merch. and, and then come on back and uh, listen to us. We're, we're coherent most of the time. And it's about identity. About identity. Doing this conversation on identity for sure. Hi, and we're back to the uh, to the Anarchology podcast. You're here with me, anarchist prisoner Sean Swain, and Ello, who, uh, who has joined us this week. And uh, we were discussing identity and how our occupation uh, informs identity, um, particularly in, in the culture we live in. It seems that occupation is really, really important, um, so much so that... Uh, some people, when they, when they life end, life. yes, and some people, when they, when they end a particular uh, uh, form of occupation, they can't adjust to life without that occupation, right. particularly I it was uh, something that you've mentioned. What's that? 40 or 50 years, they've done the same thing, and they retire, and they still have life left, but they... they Right, yeah. And, and they don't know who to be. And the same thing goes with the military. You know, we have, uh, we have as of right now, uh, 23 combat veterans a day take their own lives. And, I mean, this is just my opinion on this. I, I have nothing necessarily to back this up. But I would suggest that part of this is that we have uh, we have people who are returning, who uh, who lived their lives and had identity in a certain occupation, and they don't know how to be right, somebody or else. Wild, crazy, dramatic. Right. That was what they did. Yeah, that was who they were, and so having an occupation that is not that seems like a step down. You know. Having an identity that is no longer demotion. that a demotion wow. feels like yeah right. yeah it it feels like becoming I get nobody sent home right I get to go home I get sent home right right I'm and I don't know who to be trying to go well, I get to go I'm permitted right but if sent then it gives more of the formal like no choice type mm-hmm. and so. They don't know who to be. And, and so, right. you know, the bullet is the ultimate veto. And, and that's what I think is happening there. But I would also suggest mm-hmm. to anyone listening that occupation is a very inadequate way for, uh, for asserting identity. Because occupation mm-hmm. is what we do Yes, for a period of right. the day, but um, but that's right. not all that we do. An obligation, right? right. Mm-hmm. It requires yeah, and in many ways, society in order to participate, right? No, I get it. Yeah, and in many ways, that it's, it's how we drag am. stones up the side You're of the pyramid. You're going to learn more about me at Comic Con than you ever would at work. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, what we enjoy doing Comic-Con probably says more about us. Like, you know, 
helicopter mechanic is what I do to make the money so I can get the tickets to go to Comic Con. Right. Yeah. So so what right. we enjoy actually says more about us. So there's that. So I would suggest that occupation and what we do is an inadequate way for us to um, establish our identities. Um, any other thing you can think of for how we establish what our identity is? I say um, sexual orientation, whether it be heterosexual, lesbian, gay, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that, and that again or speaks to which was like um, mm -hmm. was that. And again, that kind of speaks to how we are rather than who we are. Although, yeah. I would say our sexuality yeah, is a big deal. There was like a, a geographic or a demographic a, a, a aspect at play based on where you are um, going to influence your politics. Oh, sure. Yeah. Or is it, okay. is it your politics influence where you live? But, well, I think that's the right. answer to I both mean, questions is yes. State, blue state. I mean, it's like. <clears throat> yeah. And I think these indicate how you view the world, how you view the experience of being you. Right. Or your right? obligation even. Yeah. Oh. And your associations and how you choose to navigate all of that. Certainly. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But um, so I've got two more on my list of ways. One of them is they can go all the way just down to like gang pointing. affiliation. Yeah, but again, that's associations. I would I would lump that in relationships, right? That's how we relate to other people. Yeah, right. yeah. So how about this? How about uh, normal? Mm -hmm. How about when we just point at our physical selves and say, "This is me." Oh, my body. Right? Our physical existence. Yeah. This is me, right. right? People do that. Yeah, right. People say, this is me, you know, for lack of anything better. I am, you know, I'm at these 10 toes and these 10 fingers in the top of my head. All the space in between that is me, right? right. My so this is, is how I soul. identify me. Yeah, well, yeah. So it's a very inadequate way to identify yourself, isn't it? So my thinking on, on that particular aspect is, is this, that first, you have inherited this biological machinery because two people who were complete strangers to you engaged in genital friction. And when they engaged in genital friction, they created these protein how bubbles. Is this, how is somebody a complete stranger that you were half? Yeah, I don't agree. We well, didn't know them yet. I would say... Well, they're not complete strangers that, to each other. They're complete strangers to you. They're not complete you don't know them yet. You either. Well, you don't know them yet. You don't exist. Hmm? But you don't know them yet. Don't you, though? Don't you're not there. Have, like, don't, don't have an idea that, that, you know what I mean? Some of us were planned. Some of our parents sat down and said, <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, that may be the case. But, but you didn't know who they were when they engaged in genital friction and created you. That's all I'm saying. I think you're over. I mean, they had this. an identity as a couple, though. They were married. They did. So they were husband yeah, and Yeah, yeah, they knew each other. Identity? Can't you know well, that? Oh, yeah, they have like, identity. Can't they be known? They got a license. Got the government involved. Sure. But they're creating you. All I'm saying is you inherited 14 chromosomes from each one of them. And you didn't get to pick them. Right. So your biological machinery that you got stuck with, that got created by two people you didn't even know at the time. And it was a crapshoot. And you got what you got. So you can point mm -hmm. to the physical body that you live in and you can say, say you know, this is me. But, but really, this is the... Right. Hmm? I I hit the genetic lottery. 
<laughs> Didn't we all? In one way or another. Some of us some of us are swimming and around in the shallow end of the chain pool. No, no, I got it kind of trimmed down now. But it's still grow I mean when it grows in, it grows in, you know. Yeah. Right, nice I got all my teeth. Twenty twenty vision, got all my teeth. You know. I did all right with that. Did all right with that. Yeah. But some of us some of us, you know, swim around in the shallow end of a gene pool a little bit. But that's not our fault. You know, we didn't pick that. So so there's that with our biological machinery. The other thing I would say to this idea of our bodies being us is uh, an experience that I had, for instance. I was, um, they tried to illegally rendition me out of state. And uh, in that fiasco, they ended up slamming my finger in a food slot and I chopped my finger off, right? So the moments before that, for my entire life, I had 10 fingers. And after that happened, I had about nine and a half. So in that moment that my finger went skittering across the floor, right? Is that my finger? Not anymore. Right. So No, I don't think it was so, because your property is the state. That's the state finger. Well yeah, that's a whole other concept though. That's a whole other that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> But, we're not there yet. But apart Tune from that, next yeah, yeah, we're not there yet. For how you become state yeah. property. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll tell you all about that. So, um, so yeah, so I'm missing the finger now. So here's my question. Um, what percentage of me did I lose when that finger got lopped off and went skittering across the floor? Mm-hmm. Am I less of who I was? There is a percentage. I mean, there is a like there is a measurement like they weigh it by the gram. They have medical. Well, yeah, yeah. In terms of, of in terms bio, of, of yeah, the weight of the of the chunk of meat, right? But apart from the apart from it just being a, a certain weight of a chunk of meat, have I lost any part of the substance of who I am? Am I only ninety eight percent of of the Sean Swain that existed? What's that? Hey, what if that one finger was the reason that you were able to eat macaroni and cheese? Without that ninth of a finger, you can't put the milk that makes the <laughs> Okay. Well, it alters how I have to navigate the world, perhaps. But I would suggest to you that okay, I am there's still no the same full way that person. You can pour milk without your pinky. You have to have one. But I can't throw a spiral. I can't throw a spiral. Yeah, it's over with. So, so yeah, you'll never win the Super so, Bowl. So yeah, I mean, you had to, so, to yeah. go out and win the Super Bowl. So my career as a as a as an NFL quarterback is over. So that changes how I have to navigate the world. Appreciate you guys for listening in. If you're still listening, I can't imagine why, but we appreciate you for this. <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram. Facebook, we got uh, merchandise, comment. And uh, and we're back, Anarchology, and we're talking about uh, identity. And we're on how our physical bodies, the biological machines we inhabit, how we identify as ourselves through these biological machines. And I was just arguing that this is a very inadequate way to identify because uh, when I got my finger chopped off, I didn't cease to be who I was. So we can actually lop off parts of our bodies. I'm not, just in case the ODRC is listening and sharpening their knives, I'm not inviting them to keep chopping off body parts. But, um, but the body parts, missing the body parts, I would suggest that um, the essence of who we are doesn't reside in the finger or the hand. And so um, I would suggest that who we are, the essence of who we are is uh, something other than our physical selves, that we are inhabiting these biological machines and we're experiencing the world through them, but that the physical machines are not really us. What do you think? 
Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> then, okay, so then uh-huh. now we start to talk about, we start to get to a place where we have to start talking about theology and what you believe. Because <clears throat> sure, Christians believe that um, there's going to come a day where people will rise up out of their graves. Dry bones will once uh-huh. again have life. And so, uh-huh. aren't your bones like, if what you believe is that, you know, there will come a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, wouldn't your, like, wouldn't your bones be there? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we're, we're also talking about. Be like, yeah, I'm here just you know, representing. Not, right. You know, not to offend anyone who, who ascribes to that. Yeah. Uh, not to offend anyone who ascribes to that. That's all. You know, whatever that cosmic process is for how the bones reconstitute. Um, okay. <laughs> I guess. Right. Um, all right. But other than that, though, we are again. Your bones are not who you we are. We are again, then. Yeah. We are infused back into that physical specimen, right? So. In the, in, in the times that the body was degraded, we weren't still, you know, hanging out in those degraded bones, I guess. Right. 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 Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 The souls had carried so on. We, for w- sure. So we. I'm with that. Yeah, we were somewhere else. Okay. Which, uh, which leads right. us right. to. Who we were. I have one other way that people often say that they identify. All right. Right. And that is by their internal qualities, right? That if you look at all of their internal Fine. qualities and stack Loving. them all up, yes, brave. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, Strong. I would suggest to you that this is also very inadequate. Um, because you might be brave, right? You might be brave compared to me, but you're not right. brave necessarily compared to Leonidas and the 300 who defended the hot gates against the Persian Empire. <laughs> or you see what I'm getting at here? So, or, or they might not be brave compared to you. Who knows? But, but in either regard, right? Uh, like that. What we're better. dealing with. There you go. See? Yeah, we'll go with that. So, uh, so either way, we have qualities here that are all relative to each other, and so we're all honest. You know. We can all list our qualities, and I can say I'm honest, because we're all honest except for when we're not, right? Right. So, so that's a very inadequate way. Um, so looking at all of these and the ways in which we identify and the ways in which we obtain identity, I would say all of them right. – each of them are really lacking in giving us a sense of who we really are. And so right. if you're cool with this, I would like for our purposes to, uh, to present to you um, an anarchological approach uh, to the question of identity. And that's this. Um, and right. remember, yeah. anarchology. Anarchology, the study of freedom, the forces that oppose it, and the methods for obtaining it, right? So this is what I would say about our identities, that we are each a general continuity of experiences, a continuity of of experiences. Everything changes, but the continuity is our own experience, and that's valid to you. What you have experienced as you, you know to be you. There's a, um, there's a thing in the Upanishads, uh, the Hindu holy book, and uh, there's a story of a boy talking with his dad. And the boy says, you know, what am I? And the father points to a pile of salt. And he says, you're like this. He said, taste that. And the boy said, yeah, I can taste salt. So he put the salt in in the bowl, 
and he put water in the bowl, and he stirred it. And he asked his son, he said, can you see the salt? And his son said, no. So his dad says, taste it. So the boy puts the bowl to his lips and he tastes it. And he says, I can taste the salt, but I can't see it. And his father says, that art thou. You are that. That is you. The salt that you can taste but can't see. The contents of the bowl. And so... For the anarchological approach to this, I like to use that analogy of the bowl. That each of us has the bowl we've inherited. And so into the bowl is, um, pours our experiences. And as the experiences pour into the bowl and it fills up, some of what's in the bowl gets displaced by what continues to come in. And so we are an ever-changing accumulation of those experiences, the water in the bowl. Now, when we experience trauma, when we experience trauma or, or anxiety and stress or burnout, you right. know, perhaps, the more pungent, perhaps the there pungent. are, yeah, there are toxins that are pouring into the bowl, right? right. We have, we have rusty salt. water. They might dissolve. Yeah, or rancid. Or, or, or rancid right. water or sewer water pours into our bowl. It doesn't just yeah. stay right where it poured in, you know. If somebody pees into your bowl, Versus. you don't drink out the other side right. and say, well, he peed on that side. Right. <laughs> you know, because, because the whole bowl becomes contaminated by the experience, by the toxicity. And so that's what we experience, Right. When we experience trauma, an experience of, of, of trauma or stress or anxiety or burnout, and that pours into the bowl, it, it turns the entire contents of our bowl slightly toxic. And so what we need are the tools to... Um, and then out of the abundance of to, our bowl, the mouth speaks. So then everything that what, we then scoop in for a serving is now but a mere snapshot of what the entire quantity is. If the entire quantity is contaminated, yeah. then equally so sure. will that portion be. And, and it, affects, it affects everything. It affects how we even view the world, you know, because it, it contaminates everything that we have. And so what we have to have are the tools um, uh, to empower ourselves. What we need is to be able to pour clear, clean water into the bowl, the experience of, 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 right. of, um, of joy and happiness and purpose in order to displace all of that toxic water. And so hopefully moving forward, that's what we're going to be doing with, uh, with, with this Anarchology podcast. Um, and the episodes that follow, what I have mapped out is um, is what I call a, uh, a a deconstructive analysis or an analytical deconstruction of all of the systems in place that that we encounter that turn the water toxic that pours into our bowls, right? So that we can get a sense right. of the sources, the experiences of the people. Of, yes, yeah. All of the things that we experience, why is this happening? Why is the water in our bowls toxic? Where is this coming from? Because often, particularly in the social sciences, we have a focus on the individual with the bowl of toxic water, right? And we, and it, and we provide some sort of disorder for each bowl of toxic water but we don't attempt to trace the water back to its toxic source. What's happening to the person? What's happening to each of us? And I would suggest that we, we have a common experience in swivelization. And so the, the, um, the episodes that follow deal with each of um, those components that toxify us so that we know where the trauma is coming from so that we can, so that we can empower ourselves 
to uh, to confront those sources of our of our toxicity and and, and thereby you know liberate ourselves. Hopefully, that's the end result. Yeah, we hope you tune in next week uh, for the next episode of Anarchology that is tentatively titled uh, Shit Your Pants. And um, yeah, anything you'd like to add? Oh, man, if you're still listening, we appreciate you leaving the computer room <laughs> while you went to the store for your... So uh, it's been fun. We've enjoyed hanging out with your Rottweilers, your Pit Bulls, your Golden Retrievers. Cat your fish because there's no possible way who are still listening. In the event that you are, comment underneath this video. Hi, merch. Keywords, give us some buzzwords. Tell us a funny story and we'll get you some merch. So-